you guys want to just stay in right behind me. They're a little more than 15. Yeah, he's feeling it already, shaking, licking. Let's figure out what was there. He said, just hold up. Come on down the hill, big boy. There he goes. Oh, he's down. John Hass. We've been out here this morning watching you work these elk up. What's, what exactly is going on around here? Uh, we're darting bull elk for a uh, adult bull elk mortality study, among other things. Meaning, for those out there who don't know what a mortality study is. Yeah, we're going to radio collar a bunch and uh, track them over two to three years and look at what, what does kill an adult bull elk. This smaller elk's getting a VHF radio collar. And this allows us just to, to know when he's alive or dead. It's all, all that we're going to use this collar for. Um, and so he'll eventually, in a year or two, grow into, grow into a nice bull, and we can track him, probably track him for the next two to three years. These collars that you put on, now, they'll last for how long? Uh, really five to six years. OK, and they have a battery in them? Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. you, so basically, when that animal is down and not moving for a long period of time, is that what tells you the animal's? Yeah, it'll, it'll get a different beep. So basically when I check on all these animals, I'll either fly or drive around, and I know a uh, beep if they're up and moving, and then the beep quickens if it's been still for four hours. And these collars are sensing enough that if I get that beep, it's usually a dead elk. Can you tell the age of a bull from the size of his rack? Uh, you can and you can't. Uh, what we saw today was probably, both of those were probably three and a half year old bulls. 25 on the inside spread. And the, you know, the kind of the luxury that I have is they're gonna grow into a bull that a Kentucky hunter would be, not that that's a bad bull, but they're gonna be nice bulls in two years and right. still be part of this study. So uh, let's talk about the fact that uh, there's gonna be a lot of hunters mm -hmm. out there and I was hunting with a guy not too long ago who saw a collar and thought he, he, didn't, right. he didn't have a real good feeling about that. He didn't know exactly what was going right. on. Right. Now, if a hunter sees an elk out there with a collar on, we're not going to discourage him from shooting that oh, elk, Oh, no, correct? definitely not. The biggest source of mortality for Kentucky bulls are hunters. Right. Um, of the 67 I had collared last year, 14 were legally harvested this fall. And if you do have that animal mounted, you don't have to have him mounted with a collar on there. No, certainly not. <laughs> certainly not. You know. And I, I usually come and, and find my collars. Exactly. So. Now, today you did, you did a variety of things. You pulled a tooth, and that's mm -hmm. for age. And explain how they do that, if you will. Um, so with the age, we pull a tooth, and we send it. There's one lab in the US that does, that does the work. And they basically just section it like you would a, like a histology sample, and then look at it under a microscope. It's not as well-defined as, say, tree rings, but it's got rings that they count to kind of gauge Then you, gauge then you take blood, what, mm -hmm. what, what do you look for? With the blood, blood stuff, we're just basically doing like a blood panel. Like if you went to the lab to have blood work done, that's what we're doing. Looking at all the, you know, different different parts of the blood and what ratios they're in. And that just gives us an idea whether the bull is normal or whether it might be abnormal. With, and then you look for parasites. Mm -hmm. With the parasite work, we actually collected a lot. If any, you know, there was, talked to a bunch of hunters in this area particularly and collect abomasums. Uh, like you would do on whitetails, do abomasal parasite count, and that gives us an idea of just what kind of parasite load they've got. They've all got parasites, but not in a bad way. It's also going to ultrasound. We measure rump fat and basically tenderloin thickness, just as a little more precise measure of, you know, how healthy this bull is. What is the average lifespan of, of a bull elk? If I had to guess, I mean, you're really good, nice trophy bulls are probably eight and a half, nine and a half year old animals. We've had some really nice 300, 320 inch bulls that we know were five and a half, six and a half. So are you, as of now, collecting data from this, extrapolating data from, from Certainly. what have you learned Certainly. so far? Uh, we've learned that, that home range is not really dependent on anything. I put out 26 GPS collars last year, which we're getting location data every two hours. 
And from that, I'm gonna analyze the picture of what a bull elk does. Uh, through the whole year, through the day, during hunting season, do they move to the woods? Um, and we've had ones that have uh, 10 square mile home ranges, and then others that live on literally the area that we're standing on. Oh, right wow. Here. So. What's the, what's the most uh, unusual thing that you've found on your study so far that kind of surprised you as far as their habits? Unusual is the fact that they probably, uh, you might collar, like we collared these two bulls out of the same herd. They may hang out with that herd for a month and then change up friends for a month and then get back with their buddies, which is, I thought was strange. I figured they would run together. So home ranges can change, like you say, from, from just, just like a, a, a square mile or mm -hmm. less mm -hmm. to 10 miles. They move all over the place. Easily. So I mean, it depends. Every elk yeah. has a different personality. Mm -hmm. Right. We've had bulls that we darted here that are on Van Boeven right now. You're Guaranteed. doing interesting work, and we appreciate you. you taking your time out and letting us follow you around today.